Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome back to the Long Term Podcast. I'm your host, Advin Villa, and today we have Aiden Tomiak, and we're going to be talking about his path to get out of depression, weight loss journey, surgery recovery, and the importance of making friends. And we also just talk about random stuff. <laughs> Welcome, Aiden. Yeah, uh, so can, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Hello. The gym, and as we know for this podcast, we're talking about a journey, weight loss, and all that. Mm-hmm. But a little backstory, I grew up pretty well. Right. right? Good family, until yeah. later on where it gets, it gets fun. Mm-hmm. Right. I like to see everything as an experience, as a uh, story. Always a story later. Right. But right. as a kid growing up, fine, all that. Mm-hmm. Had lots of different fun jobs, good schooling, mm-hmm. just a, kind of a free will person. And this is all in Sherd Park? No, so I actually grew up in Calgary. Right. Stayed in Calgary until about when I was 10, mm-hmm. and then came here. And that's actually the first time I started getting bullied, was when I moved here. Really? Yeah, because I was a fat kid who played Minecraft. Yeah. And it was hard to make friends. Well, with. A lot of people that I've met coming to school here, there have been like instances when you're in elementary, right? And you see uh, other kids make fun of other kids, right? And at, when you're at that age, kids can get mean. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, especially in, in high school, right? Like, we, as we mature, it gets kind of, it's less severe, I find, yeah. from my personal experience. But when you're in elementary, right, that's when kids are at their worst, like it's yeah, terrible. Kids are mean. Um, so you went to Calgary and then you, it was fine there. There's no bullying. No, I had lots of friends. Mm-hmm. I was, mm-hmm. I was actually fit, <laughs> I was yeah. really active mm-hmm. in sports. And then mm-hmm. I don't know what changed when I moved here. It was, yeah. it was a different vibe, I guess. Probably just like the different people, right? And you just like for some people, they, they just like to. I don't know what it is, but when people see other people and it just makes them angry it's because they don't understand you right yeah. so when these kids kind of just uh, how did they go about it like would they just like, call you names or oh yeah weight problems and the starting rumors and stuff i think i found with shared park is everyone's grown up here everyone's always known each other mm-hmm. so they come from a completely different city mm-hmm. just was the oddball out right mm-hmm. and i've always been talkative but i'm a different vibe, always about comedy, class clown type thing. So trying to take that spotlight, I guess, from some kids, class clown, mm-hmm. jealousy was involved, mm-hmm. something along those lines. But yeah, kids are mean, very, very mean. And there's a lot of school days missed because of that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's terrible, man. And just, are you, do you still know those kids now? or? I know a couple. They've obviously grown up. It's whatever, but uh, going like the way the school was from elementary, because I only did grade six here, right? Mm -hmm. So junior high was a little different. I found a group of great guys Mm -hmm. that we spent all our time with and going out, walking home together. We all live close. So it was that definitely changed the whole vibe of living here because I wanted to move away. Like Mm -hmm. I hated it here for the first year, Mm -hmm. hated it. So finding your own little group of guys was it was a lot a lot of fun. So you found that like being together with these people gave you a connection. Yes. Right. And like did the bullies go away after that? After you made these these friends? Yeah, you well, get in fights here and there with mm-hmm. some kids, right? But yeah, no. If this it was just a nice big group of guys and mm-hmm. supportive, and it, it it made me feel at home finally. Okay. Being here. Um. Did it make you angry though? Like with these kids, why? Like when they picked on you, like did you ever ask yourself why me? Did you ever feel like the victim? Oh yeah, definitely a victim. Uh, I regret not fighting back more. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was like, why are you just targeting me? Like I get new kid in class and stuff, but I was never mean to anyone really. Like only the kids who, one kid especially, who oh, he was on my football team too. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I hated him. Hated him with a passion. Still don't like him. Yeah, how come? He's just a dink, you know? Like, he, 
He's not a nice guy. And you know what? I ran into him at a bar, mm -hmm. I think a year or two ago. And he right. used to, he was a fat kid too. So I think that's why he really put pressure on me because he hated himself in that perspective. Mm -hmm. But I ran into him in a bar and he recognized me instantly. Right. And he lost all his weight. But Aiden Tomiak? I, was, I just looked at him and I was like, yeah. He was mm -hmm. like, I won't say the names for legal issues. But I was like, oh, wow. And he was being nice and he actually apologized to me. Mm -hmm. which I was shocked about because he gave me such grievance for the whole year here. Mm -hmm. I was like, I still don't like it. I was like, hey, what you did to me, man? Like, come on. Yeah. But he grew up and it was just... Why can't you forgive him? Don't know. I'm a grudge holder, I guess. Like, I, I, in a way, I forgave him. Like, I'm chill. Like, it, it happened when I was, I don't know, 10. Mm -hmm. But... It, it, there was nothing in between that really made me forgive him. So there's always going to be that little bit of hatred. Cause it, it was a tough time. I mean, when people have wronged me a lot, right? And I think carrying a lot of these things that are in us, right, it's just like, it weighs you down. Yeah. So how does like, forgiveness play into your life? How do you implement that? If Or do you just hold on to the grudges that people have? It's, when I say hold on, it's more just back of the head, whatever. Like, it's not a care, hold on. Right. So it's like, I don't care for you. But the memories are still there. Right. Okay. Um, so, can you tell me about your surgery? About, and why'd you need to get it? So... I was working as a ticket person who gave parking tickets. Mm -hmm. Best guy in the world, right? Everyone loves us. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a technician, so I was fixing the meters. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a fun way to get hurt. <laughs> like, I wish it was cooler, but I fell down a staircase because it was slippery. <laughs> and uh, my shoulder dislocated. And when it dislocated, I tore my labrum flap. So that's what holds the socket in place. Mm -hmm. So... When I went to the bottom of the stairs, some guy was walking up and I was like, you need to pop my shoulder back in to the stranger. Mm. And he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, dude, just pull it. And he pulled it and it popped back in. And uh, went to the doctors, WCB, all that. And they're like, oh, it'd be, it's just a tour, right? It might be easier. But then I could go to like a, a light switch or a door handle. I'd pull it and my shoulder would dislocate. And it, it was constant, like three times a day, I'd do semi dislocations. Oh, wow. Yeah, so finally they got me into an MRI machine. And yeah, I had one of the worst tears they've ever seen on the flap. So I was like, oh, that was fun. So they booked me in for surgery. And uh, that was horrible. That was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. And at the time, I was in a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. So. Probably didn't make it better. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah. So being at home crippled and relying on this person to take care of me and they're not there, mm -hmm. it really took a damper on the, the old ego, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we split up right after the surgery. So I was completely alone with that surgery. Mm -hmm. So the painkillers weren't working too well. Started drinking a lot. Mm -hmm. So mixing that with painkillers to just be numb. Mm -hmm. And then the weight gain. Weight gain started heavy. Went from, mm. I think before that, I was 192, and I went up to 312. Wow. In about four months. Four months? Yeah. That must have been, <laughs> were you just, it was just too much pain for you to be able to move. Couldn't move. Couldn't move, yeah. so drinking pills and eating and not being able to move at all. So you're just in this cycle where you're just... To numb the pain, you had to drink and take your pills, and then you needed to eat, and then your body's just so dysregulated, right? That for four months you went from 192, you said? Yep. To three, 300 plus. 312. I looked at wow. that scale, and I was devastated. Wow. Because I remember being younger, and like I started pushing like 190, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I need to change. And mm -hmm. in high school, I got really skinny. Like my lowest in high school in Australia was 138. Mm hmm which is a really skinny for a 6'3 guy. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, looking at that 312, mm -hmm. ooh, that hit hard. Yeah. That hit hard. Bro, just, uh, how, how does that feel to be that weight? 
to when you walk around how does that horrible impact your your psyche right and how you probably a lot of body image issues as well yeah because it's just in this day and age man i, I don't know there's so many people idealize this kind of perfect body right but then when nobody really shows like the 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 real stuff you know when people people don't really idealize like that the imperfections that we all have and that could kind of really sink in and like make us feel terrible about ourselves especially when we make mistakes right um so what made you finally get back and just fight through the pain and exercise and how did you get back bounce back from that surgery i just like like i said step on that scale and then your body image the weight it has on your shoulders and back like i just looked horrible and i i just hated myself mm-hmm. absolutely hated myself mm-hmm. but i was alone mm-hmm. like i'd have family pop in and see all i was doing and stuff but to get out of a long-term relationship while you're recovering off a really horrible surgery mm-hmm. i felt alone and i i went who else is going to help me here right. i got to help myself only you only you exactly yeah mm-hmm. so got a gym membership okay. couldn't use my shoulder at all i was doing physio mm-hmm. and i just started running mm-hmm. running 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 every day and big hoodie on pink hoodie drip yeah. drip and yeah. sweat <laughs> just drenched right. every day about right. 2 hours of cardio a day Mm-hmm. And then uh, with my physio, I started feeling a little better with my shoulder, but it was slow. Mm-hmm. And I started to look better, feel feeling better. It gave I had something to do mm-hmm. to distract myself, right? And then you start seeing results. Mm-hmm. And then I broke protocol with my physio. It was supposed to, I was not supposed to lift any weight for a year. Mm-hmm. Screw that. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. not gonna. I mean, that's for the average person, right? The average person yeah. who doesn't. But you're willing to put in the work. Exactly. I'm right? sure you break protocol, but you know your body the best. Yeah. Right? Um, you said you were in a toxic relationship during this time, and the, the that person just didn't want to be with you when this happened? Certain circumstances happen mm-hmm. where they chose something else. Mm-hmm. And now I don't, I'm not, I don't want to speak badly about them, right? Of course, yeah. yeah there's mm-hmm. there's still that oh, hurtness, I guess. Like I'm I'm pretty much I'm over it now, but it yeah it that that was a real just mm-hmm. pile on the bucket, mm-hmm. and it was a it was a four year relationship. Yeah, wow, four years, man. Three, four, and it was a it was a week after mm-hmm. the the. Um, before you, what is it called? Uh, when you date a long time? Anniversary. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. a week after our anniversary, mm-hmm. which was like, come on, right? Like, yeah. why does this keep happening? I must have been, not only were you going through the pain of surgery, weight gain, drinking a bunch to numb the pain, and the, just the food as a way to escape, heartbreak too. Yeah. <laughs> It really just hit everything. And to see you right now doing better, I'm very happy, man. Very Thank happy you. to see it. But when you say you hated yourself, though, what? How does that? Like, where did that come from? I think it came a lot from the habits of drinking and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And like, you can hate your image, but also I hated my mind, yeah. like the way I was thinking. Like it, it wasn't a, a suicidal thing. Right. I never wanted to kill myself, but right. just dark thoughts. Like, am I good enough? Am I am I gonna find another girl eventually? Like, a lot just, of people think that way though. Yeah, yeah. And it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's really tough. It's hard to break down. When you're when you're really bogged down, right, and you've repeated these things over and over in your head, it becomes reality. When you look in the mirror, you're just like, is this really who I am? Right? Is it, am I just keep? Am I gonna keep traveling down this hell? Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's that, it's so tough to break that and just get out and actually go about the world with a positive energy and smile and, you know, do something fun. Because when you're in that deep depression, right, everything seems dark and there's no hope and there's, there's no hope. You just feel so lost. When you're lost, like, where's the right way? Yep. You look around you and it's the path is just... It's so burdensome. 
and you just you're stuck, right? Um, can you can you describe uh, the the your your feelings in the lowest moment of that time? It just feels like a hole, man. Yeah. It's a hole that's smooth and circular, and you just you can't climb that wall. Yeah. And when you're at rock bottom, the only place is to go up. Like you can't get any lower except like that. But of course, yeah, right? yeah, like of course, you can't give up. Man. You can't give up. Yeah. Right? You're here for a reason. You got. And some people, the reality of it, some people do choose that path where they go. Yeah, and it, it's that. sad. It's tough, and in a way, selfish, because mm-hmm. I, I like everyone knows someone cares about you. Yeah, someone, of course, of course. an animal or mm-hmm. whether you reach out and they tell you that or not, you care. You matter to someone. Of course. So. I always knew that I've always mattered to someone, parents, friends, and stuff. Mm-hmm. But to talk about it, it's it, it's tough. So, mm-hmm. well, the way is up, and it's mm-hmm. it was to describe it's weird because everyone's is different, right? Mm-hmm. But it really just felt like rock bottom. I'm alone. It's there's what what else, what can I do? Mm-hmm. How can I do it? Like, mm-hmm. and you don't want to reach out. That's, you don't because you don't want to burden someone, right? Because you're already like. In that self pity, and I've been, I've been in that kind of not to your degree, man, but certainly I've talked to so many people, and I felt it myself. Where, yeah, the way you described it, and it's just you're, you're burdened, and you don't want to be a burden to other people, and you're at rock bottom as well, and just looking up is just, it's all up, up, uphill, but it takes work to go uphill, yeah. right? Um, so. How do you how do you deal with adversity in general? I mean, when uh, bad things happen, and I mean, you've gone through depths of hell. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and right now, how much how much are you weighing at now? Uh, weighted today two twenty eight. Nice. So but, from dude, dude that's yeah. that's crazy. Well, I've been on a vault too. Yeah. Now that I've yeah. been at the gym for that's good. two years now, so like, oh, yeah, I went I got like from the surgery, I got down to two mm-hmm. two twelve, I mm-hmm. think it was. Right. So I bulked up. I was two thirty eight two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now I'm two what is it two twenty four two twenty two. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 a journey. Uh, so, how do you deal with negativity from other people? You take it with a grain of salt. I, I use it as encouragement now. I, I, I can deal with it where it's like, oh, you're fat, or oh, this, or something goes wrong. I'm like, thanks, how can I correct that? Mm-hmm. Right? So now I, I take it as criti- uh, what's it? Cor- correct- Crist- corrective criticism? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So I... I it's just like I, I picture them they're telling me to do better mm-hmm. and how and then I st- the gears start ticking how can I do better what ways right I don't take it and go gosh darn it you're right I hate myself again no you take it and now you think of different ways of how to solve that issue why is he thinking of me like that mm-hmm. why did I did I do something to them do I actually look like that do I do I do those things just so you just start thinking how to change it. Nice. And do you think that rock bottom has changed your perspective on life? Yes, for yeah. sure. Like when you're that low, nothing matters yourself. You, you don't matter to yourself. Nothing matters. So to find that outlet, especially with, with the gym, mm-hmm. now it's it, the perspective is there. Like, holy, I was there. Mm-hmm. And I got myself up and look how many people encouraged me. Look how many people care. Look at all the beautiful things I've gotten to experience and new things I've got to do. It's, it's definitely a big change on how I've looked at the world and how I see other people and talk to other people and treat people. It's... So how do you, how did you, how do you treat people now versus before rock bottom? Way better. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be nice to everyone. Smile. Like mm-hmm. even if you give that person a chuckle, right? It you don't know what they're going on in life. And knowing that I felt alone and I didn't want to talk about it, mm-hmm. you could be the happiest, smiliest guy in the world, but they could be hurting really bad. And just that little bit of communication or hey, how you doing, right? Mm-hmm. Can mean the whole world to them. I feel that in the, the days where I'm just like, I'm just in that nihilistic kind of mode of thinking and 
this one coworker, his name's Winston, I uh, worked there at ATS Traffic for the summers. He just comes up to me, uh, he just pats me on the back and goes, I care about you, buddy. And he's a Jamaican guy and it just changed my day, man. And yeah. the, the trajectory of it, because I was just going like this and my mode of thought and then him patting me in the back and just telling him he cares. And he's a big jokester. You know? And I know he yeah. actually genuinely meant it, but half trying to be funny too. It meant a lot. Yeah. You know, and I see on on the on campus right now, uh, second year on the, the university, just I see people that are stressed and I see that some some of them want to talk about it or maybe they don't want to talk about it. Talking about it is so cathartic, right? Or like talking in general, right? You don't even have to talk about the problem itself because I believe when I'm talking to people, my mind is not on that stress, yeah. right? Because I'm, I'm stressed about exams. I'm stressed about like who I want to be in life, like like how I'm going to do, if I'm going to die, when I'm going to die, right? all these things. There's so many things that could go wrong. But when I'm talking to people, that's why I love podcasting so much. I forget about that. You know, and I'm not like in that mode of thinking all the time. But when I do, when I'm talking to someone and they do have that smiley face, they have the very positive demeanor, I feel it's like emotional contagion. I feel mm-hmm. so relieved. And to know that, I want to put it in stuff further, to know that some people also have problems. And I know it's very obvious. You tell people, right, people have problems, right? People suffer there's people that are depressed there's people that have this have that a disease there death of a loved one you hear that but when you're actually talking to someone you're looking them in the eye right, right now you opening up to me man yeah <laughs> it's actually just a way of connecting and vulnerability is such a powerful tool that everybody needs to to sh- keep sharpening you know because like there's this idea and just we males, right? We're all, oh, you got to tough yeah. it out. You got to tough it out. You got to stay hard, work out. But man, you can only go so long with that mode of thinking. And for the majority of my life, I was, I was like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's and it's definitely, me. yeah. Yeah, dude. It's really tough for guys. Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. like for you, like you're a big inspiration to me after you're like, we've never been super close, right? Yeah. Like, but we talk. We're acquaintance. Right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. recently, like, yeah. You're Goggins. <laughs> like, you're actually Goggins. Dude, I wish I was Goggins, man. I wish <laughs> like, I was Goggins. Like, when we went to the gym and hit the 5K. Dude, I was so proud of you. You fuck, That was a PR, hey? Eh? Yeah, it was a PR, man. Yeah. I've never hit a fucking yeah. Yeah. 5K. But, yeah, like, mm-hmm. even just you doing those podcasts, these podcasts, and talking to people. And I see, like, when we're in the gym, how people come up to you, oh, what are you doing here? And, like, yeah. I was like, I didn't. You touch I people, man. I have a lot of doubt too right they sure thank you so much I mean, <laughs> like that means a lot to me but i i want this platform to be something for for everyone where everyone has a story everyone's got something to teach someone no matter where how old they are no matter what race no matter what gender you know that they, they have a place and I'm, I'm very back then i used to be very conservative you know what i mean yeah that's kind of like politics is i wasn't very understanding of other people but then since you know my rock bottom too which was you know losing the people around me and just being this toxic person this negative ball of energy and i noticed people were going away man like i noticed people were detaching themselves from me because i was weighing them down and I didn't have to, <laughs> I really didn't have to. And it's not because it was all my fault. And once I realized that once I self introspected, ugly things came up. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you ever do any self introspection or? Uh, when I was in the rock bottom phase a lot now, now I'm kind of figure it out once you're out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's always change, but it's, uh, yeah, no, you, you take a good look at yourself for sure. Everybody needs to, bro. I mean, you look in your you look at yourself in the mirror, right? And it's like, who who's this person, mm-hmm. right? Like, how do you want to give to the world? Because you could give to the world and just be this negative person, right? You could hate on everyone, call everybody mm-hmm. names. You're at the gym, put shove the people down, or you could 
encourage people. You could, you know, tell everybody to keep going and be vulnerable and just humanize everyone. And what? Why do people choose negative? Because it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy to hate on it people, man. Is, especially now, yeah. especially with social media and mm -hmm. everyone's got this image and yeah. oh, it's the world still texts at the end of the day and we're a little it's, splurb in history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to help someone in that splurge or just leave a negative imprint and it won't matter anyway? Neither of it really matters at the end, right? Like a billion years from now. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna matter. But why not make a change? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why do you want to be hated? Why do yeah. you and why? Why? Why do people do that? Like at work, you know, what you and I were we're seeing. Yeah. Some people have that oh, mentality, man. Roadies, man. Oh, some dude. Are yeah, rough. but it's like, why? You don't have to. Like you really don't have to, right? Like you have certain people. They go about the world and they just. <laughs> I don't know what it is. They're angry, or I, I always think about those people, and I'm like. What if I started living my life like those people? Then I, I probably wouldn't have many friends. And I probably wouldn't have people that want to support me. All right? And if they did, they'd, maybe they'd be forced as their family. And then they would probably later on discover that, okay, this is not a good person. I want to be around. Yeah. Right? Negativity, negativity attracts negativity. Yeah, dude. The birds of the same feathers flock together. Yeah. It's, it's so true. Like the energy you put out is the energy you get. And it, it, it's weird how the world works like that. Yeah, bro. I feel that in emotional contagion too, yeah. right? Where you are feeling love, then you want to extend that love to other people. You feel hates and you show that. Yeah. Like I'm, a, I'm a believer of you can't really hide anything. Like, sure, you can try. You can keep trying, but it all comes out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh how do you rationalize all of the things that have happened to you? Like the, sh the shoulder thing. And you, you had mentioned that this happened at work over the dumbest thing. <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> you tell people that, oh, you fought a bear, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, there's something. <laughs> you know, staircase. Um, how do you rationalize that, though? Like, do you ever feel like the victim? Or do you... I turn it into a joke. Mm -hmm. Everything is comedy to me. Like as far as it stretches, like the, you just make everything a joke, a story. Mm -hmm. That's that's my process of it. Process of it, mm -hmm. and it's like it's funny. It's funny now. Like it was horrible. It was painful. It was, yeah, yeah. But it's funny now. I laugh. Yeah. I can laugh at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. it doesn't matter anymore. It's uh, everything's you a joke. Off. You don't. You overthink that stuff, right? And you're just like, then you're suffering even more. Yeah. So, like, it's not good to live in the past. No, of course not. And then you mm -hmm. can get some sympathies from, from girls at the bar sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah. This not guy, anymore. I was uh, taken, but... I was, uh, what's it called? I was this guy, this didn't get much, you yeah, know. And they go, oh, you're oh, so sweet. Take, Look how far... It's good when you have a before and after pick, right? And you're, yeah. you're like, even showing friends. And it's like, holy... You've, confidence. Confidence comes back. I think once you... When you're there, right? When you're amidst the struggle and then you look back you realize how beautiful it was you know i'm not yeah. saying that oh we should subject ourselves Colored. to terrible but like you look back on the days we're looking at the ceiling and you're just like oh gosh this again yeah <laughs> right <laughs> now you're you're here and you're you're feeling better you look back on those moments and it's quite beautiful yeah right I think that there's beauty in the struggle. So J. Cole said. Beauty in the ugly. Yeah. Ugliness and success. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. Uh, um, yeah, bro. Can you give advice onto the people that want to lose a ton of weight? Kind of like where you, they're 300 plus. Or, <laughs> can you give advice to people? Is it is it their the mindset? How, how should they start? Because I'm me, I'm I've been physical all my life, but yeah. I've never had to really go from such a huge, enormous weight to losing, you know, yeah. a bunch. So can you give some advice to some people that may want to? Everyone's bodies are different, but mm -hmm. motivation and drive is key. You got to be in that mindset, right? 
Now, if you have that mindset, like so many, I see a lot of bigger people, I want to lose weight, I want to be healthy, and they're stuck in their habits, dieting, right? You got to you gotta take control of every aspect of your life. There's no, you can't have any doubt about anything, you can't put yourself down. So, like, it all starts with just taking that step and going to the gym, going on a walk, even, yeah, right? Something. Mm-hmm. Just something. And then once you start doing it and being repetitive with it, then you start losing weight. Now, if you want to lose a crap ton of weight, hit the tready, right? Max incline, 3.5 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. And you just go. You just go. Headphones on, and you just go for it. And then bring weight training into it, because weight training destroys calories. A lot of people, mm-hmm. they'll pick up a weight. Mm-hmm. They're like, this is hard, right? I'm not going to burn. And they, they do think cardio is where it's all at, Dawkins. <laughs> no. um, but weight training burns a crap ton of calories, and it's fun. It's fun. Go flex in the mirror. Be a little bit of a gym jock, right? Like, yeah. You give that confidence. I don't recognize people. yourself. Yeah, I don't yeah. care if people look at me. Doesn't matter. I'm like full Good. on in the mirror. But Good. Good yeah, if you want to start dieting, ski, cut out the sugar because mm-hmm. and sugar leads to evil thoughts. Even like it Dude, hurts your mind. It does. It does. So like, it's okay to have a treat here and there. Mm-hmm. But being on a good diet, having that repetitive drive, mm-hmm. like Sam Selig says, have you hit your cardio today? <laughs> that's what he says? <laughs> yeah. I love that guy. Right? Very 15 minutes. That's all you have to do. Right? You and then hit, lift some weights. Whether you're starting at 10 pounds or you're ripping a 40. Mm-hmm. Just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. That's the best way to lose weight and to get into that mindset. And just repeat it. Mm-hmm. Go on walks. Mm-hmm. Find a gym buddy. Yeah. Right? That, 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 that was a big motivation because now I go to the gym alone or with friends. Mm-hmm. But to have someone be like, Let's hit the gym. You're like, yeah, yes, let's go. Let's let's go, go right? Right? You're both hyped up and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. let's do it. And let's if you go it. with someone like you, you mm-hmm. got know, a little birdie in your ear. <laughs> There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on. <laughs> it's really, think. It get, does it get cheesy? <laughs> no, you're Goggins, right? Like, it doesn't. Dude, I, I, I do cheesier. Than I that. wouldn't be able to do that 5K without you in my ear. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I didn't now, you now I hit it today. Yeah. I did 5K. Did, did you? Yeah, yeah. on oh, an yeah. incline, right? Really? Yeah, 700 calories. I'm happy to hear that. It was good. I'm proud of you. That's the first step to getting into shape. It's just find something that's not, you don't have to really like it, but just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And then you'll start to like it. And then over time, you you go from this person that like you haven't done any physical activity, right? And then you you look back and you're like, whoa, I can put a 5K and I can can go faster and I can do, I can add more and I can do more weight. Like even if you don't see results on your body and you're like, you're stepping on a scales are evil. Yeah. Right. I hated scales when I was big because you fluctuate so bad. If you, you have to do it every so often, right? You can't do it every week or every day because you fluctuate it all food in you, water intake. Like right. it, it's, it's so different. And I feel like that's where a lot of big people get stuck is just looking at that scale. You shouldn't define yourself based on the number on that. No. Yeah, no, of course no, not. You just keep doing it. And then after every so often, then you look, you go, mm-hmm. you know what? This is working. I feel good. Right. Yeah. I lost 10 pounds. I lost yeah. a pound. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that could be real body fat and not just water weight or food in your stomach or you had to use the bathroom. Right. It's like, yeah. It, that's the first steps to actually take in uh, activity into your life. And what did you do uh, in terms of diet? No. So I've tried a lot of diets. I think the biggest thing is sugar. Mm-hmm. Sugar and cake. Um, depending, like now I know a lot about dieting. But it was cutting out the fast food. Alcohol. Alcohol is a huge one. Huge. You're going to drink do tequila. Yeah. <laughs> and that, it comes from the agave plant, what I, I it's called. I'm not sure. And it, 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 there's not any sugar in it, and it's an actual, it's, it's not refined or processed as much. So if you're not going to drink tequila, is a good way. If you like I to drink. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Tequila is a good one if you're in the gym. But uh, yeah, alcohol, cut it, especially beer. Beer, you get bloated. Yeah, it's beer, that, that beer belly, right? Yeah, it's it happens. Packed with a lot but, of sugar. But yeah, cut out alcohol, cut out as much sugar as you can, mm-hmm. uh, even fruit, because it's high in fructose. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm eating healthy, I have a fruit salad every day. Mm-hmm. Your liver is turning that into fat, right? It's not taking it with cytosis. Mm-hmm. It's not, your body has so much sugar in it, it's not going into cytosis. Mm-hmm. Now, I've tried a lot, I've tried keto, don't like keto. Yeah. But one I've really found lately, that's, a, that's how, is all meat, mm-hmm. carnivore diet. 
because it puts your body in cytosis. You still get your fats. You still get the vitamins from the meat, especially red meat. And it's just yummy. I'm a big steak guy and stuff. But how do you like it? Blue. Blue? <laughs> yeah, that's what? bad. I, I just had, I just had uh, a chef, uh, Jaden Sanderson, yeah. uh, a couple of days back. <laughs> we talked about steaks. <laughs> and he just, we didn't even talk about, or I guess we talked about blue. It is safe, though. No, it's I thought fine. Though, like, it's I safe. eat steak tartare. Yeah. Tartar. You, don't, you don't get sick, though? I've never gotten sick off steak. I, <laughs> the other day, yeah, I, I cooked a bunch of pork chops, and I forgot to cook one, and I put them all back in the container. I'm at work. Mm-hmm. And I'm like eating that. I'm like, why is it so chewy? It was completely raw pork chop, and I was basically through it. Yeah. I just went, screw it. I'm just going to eat it all. I ate just a raw pork chop. Not sick. <laughs> There's a guy on Instagram, man. He, he eats raw not, chicken not liver every cake. day. No, no, not liver cake. cake. <laughs> but this guy, he's proven. He's like, no, don't eat raw what's, chicken. What's I don't he, believe What's he that. called? Oh, I forget what he's called. Guy eats raw chicken. But he's on like day 72. Every day? What the? Every day. He says he's... <laughs> Uh, that guy. What the heck? Every, <laughs> every day he's just been eating raw chicken until so he this gets This guy sick. eats raw chicken <laughs> every day. And I... Until he's like day 74 or whatever. Like, and raw egg, raw chicken, just pops it in. Maybe, is it not like, maybe staged or... No. Like, he, he just takes a chunk out of a raw chicken breast. What the... He's like, I'm eating it until every day, until I get sick. Why? I don't know. Like, it looks... Is he viral? Is he doing Oh, yeah, he's definitely viral. He's probably doing it for views. But he actually does it. And but he really... like doesn't get sick. It's scary. i seen this guy uh, on TikTok, and he just eats, like, sticks of butter. And mm. he'll, like, drink, like, eggs. It's kind of, like, kind of this weird kind of... Well, real, like, un, like, unsalted, non-processed butter is good for you, right? You get a really good yeah. source of fat. Yeah. Now, do that type of diet? Probably don't. Yeah, especially the chicken. Yeah, probably don't. But raw steak steak is fine, right? Yeah, Yeah. I always discuss everyone like my girlfriend and stuff. That I'll do like a minute, a minute on a side. That's good for me. I'm fine. Really? Yeah. What the? (laughs) It's weird. Like the most I'll have it is rare. Like anything over rare. What? Dude, that's I got. I've actually never seen a blue steak. It's basically raw. What you eat that? Yeah. This is. Yeah. Which, which one's most uh, resembles the uh, kind of the steak you like that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, people actually eat this. Aiden's a big. <laughs> Love it, bro. You get all the flavor and juices. This is freaking amazing. If it ain't moving, I ain't chewing. Oh god, that's that's crazy. No, oh, I love that, man. Um, okay, we're going off topic. <laughs> yeah. How how have the connections in your life helped you to get over the, the adversity, the, the rock bottom, the burden? Love that question. Because mm-hmm. when I was in Australia, the connection, I always say my real friends aren't here. Like, of course I got real friends here. But my true, like, brothers, they don't live here. They're in different countries. And four years now, coming up five years, mm-hmm. I've since I've been to Australia, mm-hmm. I talk to them all the time. They come visit me. They'll fly over. Do they? Like, yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Just last week, my buddy, he lives in Saskatchewan and right. I met him there. Yeah. Right. But every year, he takes one or two trips down just to come see me. Wow. And I've, I had a friend from the Philippines, Vince. He came to see me. Really? Yeah. He was, he was from all, because he travels for, he follows K-pop. He's a promoter. Mm-hmm. But he's like, I'm, I got something coming in Toronto, but I'm just going to fly out to come see you. That's awesome. And he just flew out, come what'd see you guys, me. What'd you guys do? He got really sick. Oh, and yeah. then <laughs> um, the day he was feeling good, he's like, I want to try edibles. And I was like, okay, sure. Like, I, I don't do that stuff anymore because right. I, I get drug tested. But I, I had some that I made from a while ago. And I was like, take one and see how you feel. And I put four on a plate. They're just tiny little gummies. And I turned around and come back. They're gone. I was like, where, where'd they go? He's like, oh, I'll be fine. Scarfed I ate them. them. Dude, I've never seen someone more sick and high in my life. He was in the in the bath. Like, oh, jeez. Nine hours it took before he was covered. Next day, he's like, I don't like edibles. Yeah. <laughs> it was his first time trying them. I was like, I told you, don't do it. But yeah, these people, they, I stay in touch with them every day. Like, I have a friend in Germany, Leon. I have, I went to a rave in Australia and I met these guys from Canada, Saskatoon. Talk to them every day. Play Fortnite with them every day. They come visit me all the time. I have friends in England and Brazil, and like I talk to them almost every single day. Mm-hmm. And they come visit, and it's it's really weird. It must be really fulfilling too, hey, to yeah. know that you have 
around the world that makes you feel connected. Well, the best story I've ever had was just after I left Australia, mm -hmm. some girls I met there, they texted me. They go, people are still telling stories about you. Oh, yeah? I left a legacy there right on the coast. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, we're at a bar. Get crazy? And he's, yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah. I was mental. Like, I was, <laughs> I was something else. But they're at a bar, mm -hmm. and these guys are like, we met this crazy Australian months ago, or Canadian months ago. Yeah. And they're talking, and they're like, yeah, his name was Aiden. They're like, and they showed him a picture, and they're like, yeah, that's the guy. And they're like, oh, my God, really? Like, I, I it, it, the imprint I left, which I love, I love leaving an imprint, right? Make you feel good, right? Exactly. Not to be cocky about it, but no, it does. You you touch these people, yeah. Lives, it and was, as long as you're not hurt, weird. as long as you're not hurting anyone, you you spread funny <laughs> stories and you get crazy, right? Yeah, it, it was weird that I left an imprint on people, and they were still talking to me four or five months after I left, and meeting people I met, and just like, well, you met them too, <laughs> right? And then them changing stories with what I did with them, and that's awesome. Yeah, it's I I love to leave a good imprint on people. What was it that made you stand out and leave an imprint like I, did you did you just were you just crazy and people just yeah, remember I, the funny stories or did you actually connect and how did you connect with these people and definitely a lot of funny stories but i i i, I just wanted to make friends and like real connections so like going up to someone on the first day and being like okay you're coming with me i'm going to show you around and then spending because in a hostel life, you spend quite a bit of time until you switch to a different hostel and you move around. So my party trick was I would just slam bottles of vodka. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, right. Steve will do it. Like, right. I was just... Yeah. And I yeah. walk into a party, I pop a bottle, let's yeah. go. And yeah. I go up to people, come on, you're drinking with... Like, mm -hmm. just including everyone, playing games, finding things to do. And I was... So you like to just pull these different people and... Hold on, if I see you alone and you're like... They go and feel a part of... Yeah. The, the the circle yeah you know, there was included <laughs> i had these two girls in my hostel room they were i think one was 38 and one was 28 so they were older right and they felt like they were my mom because they're like how you're crazy and yeah i would like come up to a bar they're like hey are you okay i take two drinks out of their hands slam it disappear mm -hmm. they go back to the hostel they'd be all worried about me and i just show up chilling on the hammock they're like where were you I'm like, oh, oh, somewhere right yeah a, a lot of times i went with the homeless there Really? You hung out with the homeless? Dude, I went outside once, and we go to the main strip on Byron Bay. I was with my buddy Max, who I met in a hostel line. It was pizza night, and I was like, pizza. he's like, is this a line? I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, cool, and then we just became friends. And I was like, come with me tonight. He's like, okay. It was his first time in Byron. And I'm like, I want some, I want some weed. So I go up to this homeless crackhead. I'm like, you guys know where to get weed? And the guy jumps up. He's like, yeah, 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 follow me, follow me. So we're following him into the jungle. <laughs> the and, where, were you not like oh gosh am I gonna get oh I didn't care I was like screw it and my buddy Max he's like he's like it's gonna mate, up, mate I can't do this like you're yeah. gonna get we're gonna get killed I'm like shush he's, he's taking us so he leaves me he's like I'm going back to the hostel I'm like okay whatever so I follow this homeless guy he's telling me he's a native Australian and we get to this crackhead camp in the middle of the jungle mm -hmm. and everyone's kind of looking at me and I'm like Who's this guy? Who's this? Yeah, I'm, I'm in a Supreme bag. I'm like a hostel type of vibe. Yeah, yeah. And he runs off. He talks to someone. Yeah. And then I see this person playing with like a fire hula hoop. I'm like, can I try it? So I'm playing with fire hula hoop. He comes back. He goes, we got to go to the alley. I'm like, okay. So right. I follow him to this alley. Right. It was this amazing party. Locals, hostel, homeless, everyone, drums, guitar, homeless. mics. <laughs> homeless, yeah. yeah. Everyone's just vibing. It was this great big alley party. And then, like, guys on drums, this girl singing. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. It was the best night of my life. I go back to the hostel, and Max is like, you're not dead? I'm like, dude, you missed the best night. So you got to take some risks, of course. Like, it was probably, I tell my mom that story, and she hates it. Yeah, she's probably, why would you do that? No, but it was one of the best nights of my life. It was just taking that risk and trusting someone. Mm -hmm. It was great. See, I believe that like, if you place your trust in other people and you believe that the human race is good, then you're setting yourself up for victory, man. When we come back to that energy, I gave out a positive energy, gave me a positive energy, yeah. and it worked out great. Very unlikely for you to, like <laughs> sure it does happen where good people do die yeah all right good people a lot of lots of chaos in this world but if you just prioritize the good 
and spread peace, love, positivity, and bring people together, and you know, look at humanity for the good that it has, and don't view people just based because they're poor, because they're this yeah. race, right? Like he was tweaking out. But yeah, yeah, but it's interested. just everybody's addicted to something, yeah. right? Um, I think did we touch upon traveling? I think not much. No, not much. Uh, can you tell me your uh, your travels and? Yeah. And where you've been, so, and highlights. I love traveling. I wish I could do it more if I had the money. And yeah, my last trip to London was horrible. I've told you about that. Big... I talked to your dad. Yeah. <laughs> God, <laughs> dude, dude, the... was... Wait, did you even make it? No. Yeah, the flights were just... I had a plane crash almost. Like, we had an emergency landing where we I slammed onto the... Yeah, yeah, so like... Were you just like... <laughs> oh, oh dude, this I is hate flying. I this hate is it. YouTube. This is it. <laughs> it was I just fell asleep too I after the life but yeah. scratch that story that was yeah. not even a travel story that was no it was just yeah but when I went to Australia yeah I was in a dead end job <laughs> was getting in that slump I was looking good I was thin but mm-hmm. I was like oh, what am I gonna do like I mentally want, you're just not wanted something new I wanted to just get away booked a random trip random just bought my ticket said see everybody and I was like what no plan yeah, I think I talked to you before that. And you're yeah, like, I was like, yeah. No, I was there before you. And yeah. You're like, oh, I'm actually coming there. Well, I was like, asking you about it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with your story. Yeah, so I just wanted to get away. I wanted a new change, everything. And what better way to get away from everything is to go to a complete opposite country across the world and mm-hmm. send it. And I did have contacts. Like my uncle, great uncle Esther lives there. Dopest guy you ever meet. He sailed the world. Like, yeah. So sick to meet him. I never got to meet my grandpa from my mom because he died before I was born. So meeting him, he was identical. He, I'll never forget, he went, oh man, you remind me of my brother. Yeah. Which was nice, but <laughs> sent it. I was supposed to be to two years, but COVID happened while I was there. So I had to come home because the borders were shutting. But mm-hmm. that's like traveling. I think the best experience is to go alone, go backpacking, meet people. Backpacking. I've never done that, man. It is yeah. something else, especially with no plan. Like you can make a plan. Like don't be risky like me, right? Because mm-hmm. they could have. But it turned out to be the best, humbling experience of my life, and it really opened my eyes. And that's so much that I did, like alone and with people, and mm-hmm. like I said, the connections I made with some of my brothers now. Yeah, it's and they come and visit. Who wants to come visit a Canadian yeah. five years later? Like you never think beautiful, ever. And there's just different cultures you experience, yeah. the different views, and the, you get to meet all sorts of people. Mm-hmm. And, and traveling with friends, like after, I think it was two years ago, we, uh, we went to Arizona as a boys trip. Right. And uh, I got really sick. Mm-hmm. Like I had a bad chest infection, so I only right. went out one uh, night mm-hmm. and I got arrested that night. Not fully de- like detained. Because crazy <laughs> stuff. My, my buddy, he was interviewing, like doing street interviews for podcasts. Dude, I want to do that, but it's just it's risky. Yeah, yeah but he's nice. he's with the girl and they're talking, and they're like, the guy's like, you should kiss. He's like, you want to kiss? She's like, you go for it. And as he's doing, it, I just run up and I knocked him. I punched him. It's <laughs> for fun. And so we go on this like friend brawl, right? So we're slapping each other. Mm-hmm. Boom, handcuffed, cops on us, like, fully detained, like, <laughs> they're like, you move, it'll be the worst. We're friends, we're friends. We're yelling that, and mm. one cop we messed with earlier that night, he went, they're Canadian, they're friends, let yeah. them go. So we got a big warning. Yeah. So apparently cops in the States can charge you with assault without the other party charging you. Wow. Like, the cops can actually charge you with assault. That's crazy. So we're like, really sorry, mm. but traveling with friends versus traveling alone two different experiences completely i i prefer traveling alone and meeting people versus going with my idiot friends because <laughs> you already know them see i've i've traveled with a buddy and well he's great like we're very close i know i've known him since grade three and we didn't end up becoming really good friends until grade eight yeah like traveling with a buddy it's it's not like you go, sure, you can grow closer, but you, you've you spent so many times with that person. Other. Going to another country isn't really going to make that way better in a Once sense where it's like noticeable. <laughs> Unless you get kidnapped and yeah. you guys have like, you save each other. Yeah. And it's this whole, it's just a different, sure, there's margaritas and there's a beach, but it's just like coming over to this house and I don't know. I just, talking to friends, it's different because you, you can't really get a, immersed in the culture right sure you could if your friend's like very adventurous but 
then they're if they're tired, if you're tired, if you go inside your comfort. There's yeah, always yeah. a little bit of comfort there still. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they going alone. Right. You're just alone. You're like, oh gosh, I need to talk to someone. You have to go crazy. Yeah, you mm-hmm. have to. That's what I really like is pushing myself out of the box, and mm-hmm. that's where I gain so much of my communication mm-hmm. skills from. Mm-hmm. And like I like I said, like you can just play a card game with someone who speaks no English, but you know the same card game. Mm-hmm. And that, I think it's beautiful. Body le- body movement, body language as well. Like, I think, forget what percentage it was, but it isn't like a 60, 70%. But even if somebody doesn't say words, like you can tell kind of what they're trying to convey. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you, ever, sure. you ever had that? You, somebody doesn't know how to speak English, but like the look in their eyes, you could just tell they're a good person. Yeah. Or vice versa. You can tell that this guy wants to like kill me. <laughs> this no, guy, exactly. this guy is hateful. Body is language hateful? says all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Mm-hmm. Um, what does a what does a friend mean to you? A friend means to me. That's a hard definition to break down, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's a connection and a bond that is unsaid. Mm-hmm. So, as example, like my friends, like I don't have to talk to some people for years. Mm-hmm. Out of the blue, they'll hit me up, and it's like you pick up right where you left off. Mm-hmm. so a true friend is like obviously they're there for you obviously you care for each other you have fun stories but it's just something there that you pick up where you left off and it's just you mm-hmm. just your energy connection is just completely on scale with each other mm-hmm. so that's that's what i think a friend really is is mm-hmm. just they're there you know they're there yeah uh for me, a, f- a friend is when you're just there for the achievements and you're there for the despair. So I guess presence. Yeah. You know, we, I think Jordan Peterson defines it as celebration in the achievements and despair in the failures. Yeah. Because there are friends, or I guess friends, that when you tell them a, an achievement, right, they're like, oh, but I did this better. Yeah. It's like, okay. And then, right. or if you're like, hey, I'm struggling. Yeah, but my life is worse. It's yeah. like, bro, like just be there for me. Yeah. Okay, hear me out. I, and I've had to cut those people. Out. You have to. Like, like it, me, 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 me. Yeah, me, 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 me. And it's like, it's hurt. It's because it hurts you because you've been, it's not just like a friend that you've met, right? It's like you guys have been through all these trials yeah. and tribulations and in elementary and middle school and high school. And then you realize the feeling you get from the interactions, right? And you realize, why do I feel closer to this person that I met a week ago than to you? Yeah. Right? It's like... Something off there. Something off. You yeah, know? you have to cut out a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I've cut out so many people. Yeah. And yeah. people change. People do change. Because you can have that same vibration, right? And then a week later, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, yeah. what? Like, who are you? Mm-hmm. But then... There is forgiveness, though. There is. There is, like, because everybody, nobody's perfect. Oh, of right? course not. Yeah, yeah we, we make mistakes. But then again, you can only, you know, put up with that so much because we're all mm-hmm. human. Um, but who do you look up to? That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. Everyone has a hero. But do I have a hero? I look up to myself. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big thing everyone should do. Look up to yourself. Mm-hmm. But I look up to a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. You could say a celebrity. My parents. Mm-hmm. Sure, like, everyone goes through life mm-hmm. the same time. So, like, when you're looking up to your parents, it's their first time in life, too. Mm-hmm. So when people, like, have hatred for things they do, they're human. But I make mistakes. I look up to myself. I'm, I'm proud of myself. That's great. It's good. I look up to where my family is and what they've accomplished and what they're going through. Look up to my friends a great deal. I look up to you. Up <laughs> so to it, you it's hard to pick up one hero. I have many. Because everyone has a different quality I want to take from. Mm-hmm. So just everyone really. It's but a great response. I, I like myself more. Not to be egotistical, but you have to have that. Well, the, the belief is, right, like uh, when you're riding a plane or in a boat, they give the instructions of... You have to save yourself first, because mm-hmm. if you don't prioritize yourself, then you're gonna drown or you'll die, and you won't be able to help anyone. Yeah. So being able to be your stand own your ground and be who you are, 
then that's when you can extend the love, extend the reaching hand to save other people. Because yep. if you can't save yourself, why do you can't save other people? Yep. It's just the reality of it. Yep. Be your own hero. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to someone who feels like they hit rock bottom and it, it could be their mental issues. It could be they, they're lonely. It could be you know, they just don't have meaning. They go up to you. They go, hey, Aiden, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of the darkness? Knock it off. No. Um, grow up. Yeah, <laughs> grow up. Grow up. No, it's, uh, I'll be there for them. Well, what I would say is, once you hit rock bottom, where else are you going to go? Up. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's such a cliche saying, but just find that drive. Find something. Like, make them laugh. Do Get them out. Get, find a hobby. Like you will get out of it. Mm-hmm. There's always a point to get out of it. You can't can't go lower. You just can't. Like that's just death. Do you want that? People care. Mm-hmm. People care. Your animals care. Something. But you just just find that something, and it, you just go up. And it could be little. It could be little. It could be a little sh- treat, a chocolate for all you care, and that gives you a little bit of happiness. Now, think about that happiness. Mm-hmm. where's it coming from there's something everyone like you can be the most miserable old bag in the world something makes her happy something makes everyone happy mm-hmm. now to expand on that you gotta just you just gotta think let those gears turn and mm-hmm. go up yeah. go up mm-hmm. travel yeah. travel is a huge one mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. get out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. you might hate yourself for months after oh, i hated doing that mm-hmm. but eventually you'll look back and be like Oh, it wasn't as worse as doing that. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't as worse as doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, look where I am now. Halfway up the tunnel. Hole. Yeah. Whatever you are, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I would say. It's just, you can't go down. You can only go up. Find where you want to be. Find what you want to be. Find yourself. And just go for it. What's the worst? We're a blip in time. We're nothing. We're a speck in the little universe of expansion. Is it going to matter? No. But it matters in the time. Mm-hmm. So take that time and do something with it. I know we, like a lot of people could have different mindsets in life, right? Like so many people go, yeah, why try when we're just a speck? Why try? But then that's a reason you should try because, yeah. we're, you know, it, since it doesn't matter, that's why it matters. You yeah. know, since it matters, it doesn't. There is such beauty and like you, you had said that there's something that makes everyone happy yeah whether you could be the most miserable like toxic person and you could something makes you happy and you hone in on that and you make you prioritize that and you revel in it and you realize that hey it's not all dark no you can leave an imprint look at the dinosaurs they were nothing. Now we got cool fossils to look yeah. at. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, That's like it, it could matter later in time, millions, trillions years. Something could happen. You could leave a big imprint, mm-hmm. or you may not. Mm-hmm. But it's leaving that imprint now for the people around you to live in this time, this little era that you have to do something so great, so powerful, even if it's for five minutes or millions of years, you can do it. Mm-hmm. There's this quote Viktor Frankl has and it goes um, I'm going to paraphrase for most of it purpose is not in the general sense uh, and it differs from day to day from man to man and from hour to hour so therefore purpose in general isn't the question it's what is your purpose at that exact time because when you go about the world, let's say you're, you're at work, what is your purpose? Okay, you're there to work. Yeah. But also you're there to talk to people. I mean, work, life, it's just people. Yeah. You know, you're there to have a smile and respect people. And, and you know, maybe you don't have people around you. I mean, what's your purpose then? You wake up, the dishes. That's your purpose. Yeah. You revel in it. That's an opportunity. Because there's some people out there that can do that. Or when you're... You know, with the friend. That's your purpose right now, to be with yeah. a friend. 
Our purpose right now is just to have a conversation. Exactly. Exactly. And that that's so much beauty in there. And people place too much emphasis on like, okay, I, I can't. Elon Musk is already doing all yeah, this. Like Gandhi, it. comparison is a thief of joy. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's where, for you, what is your kind of grand purpose, let's say? Right? Like um, to, to be here. here. Yeah. To do what I can. To live. Yeah. Just to breathe. Yeah. There's, what else is there to do, right? Make yeah. someone laugh. Go travel. And go. Mm -hmm. Lick a tree in a forest. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do something. Like, I'm, my purpose is just to be here for the people around me, for the animals around me, for the interactions I have on a daily day. Mm -hmm. My purpose is here. And to live. To right. live. I feel like too many people place so much emphasis on kind of what they're going to do when really you just got to live. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like... And that's, that's a great way of looking at life because when you lose those high, high expectations and you just go about the day and you have gratitude and you love yourself, it's so much, it's, it's freeing. It's free. Yeah. You're a free person. Mm -hmm. You have free will. Mm -hmm. yeah. A rock can't say that. I can't say that. That's no, true. Your water can't say that. No, we're we're such it's a weird like species in time right now. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it dumbfounds me of like when people are like, Oh I'm just gonna die. Cool, everything else dies. Yeah. What if we didn't have trees that lived and died, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So everything has some type of person pur purpose and effect. Mm -hmm. So just just make the most of it. Yeah, I'm a, a firm believer. Everyone has a purpose. Yeah. Like everybody was born, and they have a role. Mm -hmm. They have a function in this world, and if you internalize that, and you believe it to your very core, there's something for you. Yeah, you will find something. It doesn't matter. Like we said, you're in your darkest state. You're in your happiest state. You will find something. For someone, for something, for anything. Like, it's just, it's just there. And when you harness it and you figure it out, mm -hmm. it's great. Right? It's great. Yeah. 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 I mean, even just, like, right now, right? I'm looking at the ceiling, looking at the, like, my house. Like, I'm like there's people out there that don't have this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking about the the wars right now, and I'm like, and the I feel so privileged in the trenches, right? And I feel like right now... In Canada, Shore Park, we're also privileged, yeah. right? Like, and we take it for granted. Everyone, we takes do. It. Everybody it takes. Doesn't matter it. how open you think, and if you have that feeling, you're still gonna take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like there's probably a guy in the trench right now in Ukraine. He's yeah. joking with his buddy while getting bombed. Yeah, yeah. That's his purpose: is to keep that guy happy mm -hmm. while they're in such a tough mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. yeah. It, it's so weird to think about. Like, mm -hmm. there's a vast. Maybe time stops it's, it's our age. age. Yeah. You know? It's, like, I... It kind of makes me guilty sometimes, though. Just, like, having that thought that there are people out there. Like, why Why do I deserve this, right? Your mind's like, your biggest yeah, enemy. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And there's this quote. It's, like, God told me to love my worst enemy, so... I love myself. <laughs> yeah. Is that crazy? I, I I read that and I'm like, yeah, I, I think my mind is kind of like the biggest hater I've got. Make like, sure someone, someone can tell you something, right? Like maybe they'll tell you something about, oh, your hat's funny or you're a piece of shit or you're ugly. Yeah. And you'll only get offended if you believe it. Yeah. You know what's that? Right? Like your mind is your worst enemy. And you'll only believe, you only get offended if you believe the statement. Because if you don't, if you if you go, I don't believe that. Like if a kid called you ugly, you'd kind of go, aha, whatever. But it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flag football, like drop kick that kid. <laughs> um, but what's it called? When, if you insult someone, right? It's usually coming from a place of hate too. So you take the time to understand that person that they are going through stuff because the normal a normal healthy person I believe 
doesn't spread hate. Yeah. Yeah. Like at normal, at my healthiest, at my, I do not want to insult everyone. I'm so happy and I want to be here and I want to say hi to that person and recognize who they are and get to know them. Well, when they're doing it, who's making fun of them? Like they're coming for more hate. Yeah. They, and it just them. builds a cycle. Yeah. Right. And taking the time to understand that, to go, yeah, that person's probably going through some stuff. Yeah. Empathy. That's so why I believe empathy yeah. is like the biggest power that we've got in this world. I don't take words. Like, it's so funny when someone insults you. It's like, mm-hmm. it's just vocal cords making sound. And we just yeah. interpret it into, it's like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. you wouldn't be offended by that. But as soon as I go, oh, you have a bad haircut. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, like, it doesn't make any sense. But our mind turns it into like, I'm offended. Yeah, you look, yeah, you I'm defensive now. Yeah. Really, I'm a failure. Look at you, and then, yeah. then you, when you fire back, it's just a cycle. Because then you're both hurting each other, yeah. and then it just like, it's just so messy. Well, it's weird know? when the mind like mm-hmm. to get back at someone, it almost feels like yes, I did the best thing. But then you're like, wait a minute, no, I didn't. I'm just like them now. Mm-hmm. Why did I just no, spread really. more hate? It, it, it's weird how your mind's like, you have to get back at them. Mm-hmm. You don't. That's why I'm a fur. I. I've heard this a lot now where when you see someone that annoys you or like that someone does something and I feel like we, the way when we feel annoyed because of that, it's because we see that in ourselves sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, like I see this, um, one person I've met on my trip to the Philippines and he was just like, he was weak, you know, and that's not to the sense where he was just like scared of the struggle. He was like very going about the world and he was very terrified of everything yeah. and it, it annoyed me. And I, I did some self introspection. I go, why does that annoy me? And I'm like, because I see that in myself sometimes and I'm scared to be weak mm-hmm. you know, and I don't want to be weak. And I think I could be, I really could be. Everyone you know, they, can be. Everyone can be. And that's like, well, vulnerable to it. Like nobody is immune to accidents. Nobody's immune to stroke, to death, you know, like, there's Alzheimer's, there's like, there's cancer, like there's just car crashes. And I think everybody should understand, but at the same time, like you said earlier, you can't feel like the victim because there is a purpose and a role and you, you, you get a hu- add humor to it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. Um, you want to wanna talk about, uh, what's it called, anime? <laughs> oh, you can but you, you wanna you wanna add anything more to that though? No, I think uh, I think mm-hmm. we had a really good discussion about where I've come from and how people can take this and maybe we made a change for someone. Yeah. That one random person you stumbled upon this podcast. <laughs> right? I don't know, man. Do they act? Do people actually listen? Do people actually listen? I listen. <laughs> um, but you're actually inclined though, because you're my friend. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not I, when you started posting these, like we weren't yeah. that close, and then I reached out mm-hmm. to you because I'm like, "Well, he's got something here," mm-hmm. and now I fall asleep to these. <laughs> like, to, I love listening to the podcast, Dude, but I, like, uh, yeah. hopefully, I'm, I'll be releasing this tonight. So hopefully, you you know give me some positive criticism or, oh. or construct, constructive. That's what it was. Constructive. That, that's what it was yes, really, that's what yeah, yeah. Was. Um, but yeah, bro. Uh, top top three. Top three animes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, before we start that, let's do a little break. I need All to right. use the washroom. All right. So, yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> tell me about... We're back. Tell me about your top three. Oh, there's too anime. many, bro. I have seen probably over, like, 2,000 animes. Half 2,000? Yeah. No way. The weird... Okay, my cousin. 2,000? Yeah, dude. I, I watch anime way too much. <laughs> like I've seen everything. My cousin, right? He's the encyclopedia for anime. He's he's he has Asperger's, so he connects to it. Mm-hmm. I I can find a jingle of an anime I heard on Instagram and forgot. I'll be like, it goes. Ha, 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 ha. He's like, oh, it's this one, this season. You want to watch this? Yeah. He's crazy with it, but yeah, I've. He's the plug. <laughs> yeah, he is the plug for anime. But yeah. yeah, I think the anime that got me into all animes was Naruto. That is the best starter one, I think. Yeah. Because it's not crazy long like One Piece where it's still going on. Mm-hmm. But Naruto, it was just sick. Now, Boruto sucks. Boruto sucks. Mm-hmm. Like Boruto's that, before, right? Like it's, a prequel? No, it's the next generation. It's his next kid. generation. Okay. Sucks. Hate it. It looks just like him. Well, they took away all... Yeah, it looks just like him, but they took away... Like, Naruto has no powers now. Mm. No Nine-Tail Fox. 
What? Sasuke lost his Renegon and Sharingan. Yeah, I've never watched They Renegon added Sasuke. dinosaurs. Yeah. Like, it just makes no sense. They ruined it because they got a different writer. But mm-hmm. Naruto, I've watched it in Japanese and English three times each. <laughs> Every episode. Like, I, I, I was obsessed with it. I got tattoos of Naruto all over my legs. But that was the anime that got me into animes. Uh, top three, Jujutsu Kaisen. Naruto. I'm just we'll great. do basic for that because there's some weird ones. Mm-hmm. Rising of a Shield Hero is great. Uh, the Shield Hero, the guy who just has a shield? Yeah. What, was season two good? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, Bro, I loved Shield Hero. It's so when everybody was hating on him and good. and everybody's like, oh, you're just a Shield Hero. Yeah. And just like seeing this person who had nothing, like they gave him a shield and then partnering up with, um, what's, what's her name? Starts with an R, but yeah, there are all so many names. There's so many names, but just the, the premise of this was just beautiful. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's good. There's one that I really like. Um, Overlord. Overlord. He, it's a uh, Isekai uh, RPG, mm-hmm. or yeah, RPG, whatever it is. But he gets reincarnated, so like it's like a game they all play, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it's like they're shutting down the servers, so he's waiting in his giant, because they're the best on the server in his giant manner, mm-hmm. and only one other guy joins. He's like, well, I guess our guild is the, at the end, and they mm-hmm. shut down the servers, mm-hmm. but now he's in the game. It's not like Sword Art Online? or Kind of. Yeah. And so he's like, his name's Ainz, the character. He's this giant overpower, because now he's got all his same game stats, but he's reincarnated into the game, mm-hmm. and has all these minions, and he's just overpowered as OP. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And it's really good. They have season five out now. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of season, but it's really good. Timeline reincarnated as a slime. Mm. That's a good one. Have you seen that one? I've seen the first and second season. Oh, dude, it's yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Mm-hmm. There's, there's just way too many to talk. Building about. the, um, like the, the, her own village and seeing like all these people come together. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's uh, like reincarnated out of the sun. A good funny one is the cautious hero. The so, cautious hero. Yeah. So this goddess reincarnates this guy to like fight in different worlds to save them. Mm-hmm. And they always do heroes, but they, she gets this one guy. She's like, quickly, we must go. And he's like, shut up. I need to train. She's <laughs> yeah. like, what? Like you already have good stats. He's like, nope. I need to train. So he like walks around. He's just doing push-ups and working out to get his stats. And he like smacks her when she's talking. She's like, the world's about the end. He's like, okay, I'm ready. And then he goes in and he's like, now he's like super overpowered. <laughs> it's so, he's just overly cautious. And like, he'll kill a boss and he'll be like, it's not done. I must evap. And he yeah. just spams and he ends up destroying towns and stuff. And he's like, no, I feel good. They're like, why'd you do that? I was already <laughs> defeated. Right. So they yeah. Anime is just so it's great. Um, do you ever apply the some of these fictional characters to real life? Dude, the gym. Yeah? You can't be a gym rat and not have anime in your Yeah, life. of course. That's true. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, are you kidding me? To be overpowered? Like, my music is yeah. the weirdest music. Yeah. Like, it's EDM mixed with Ronnie yeah. Coleman screaming mixed with anime quotes screaming all into one so it'll be like a yeah. like a um a katie perry song mm-hmm. and then ronnie coleman just yells yeah buddy yeah. and then you have like a blurb of itachi yeah. saying like mm-hmm. it's weird music but mm-hmm. it gives you power like you look at these animes and it's like holy crap i want to have an anime body i want to be just like that character that, i have an unrealistic vision mm-hmm. to be an anime lord yeah. in the gym right? yeah dude that's that's great i see the kind of the prevalence onto anime culture too, making it in the gym. Uh, I've seen the shirts a lot of people wear. Yeah, it's the best pump, pump my, covers. Yeah, yeah. My my buddy um, Matthew Yannick, uh, he's he loves Berserk. Have yeah, you heard of that? Berserk. Oh, that's Saga. a gym. That yeah, is a gym yeah, one for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of that that boxing one. A lot of yeah. people like that one. Is that uh, One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. Dude, that guy's Jack, bro. He's Jack. Is <laughs> he Saitama? Is he like Saitama? <laughs> but yeah. Hey, yeah, bro. I definitely everybody. If you haven't seen any anime, make sure to watch because it's it'll change your life. Hit me up. I'll give you yeah. a list. Yeah, two thousand. No way, dude. It's, it's a, crazy. Yeah, like I said, my cousin. He's probably watched over two thousand. <laughs> it's well, I like anime because it's the it's only kind of, type like movies and TV shows where you can find your genres drama. Anime covers everything: mm-hmm. sadness, action, 
and Ray Car- you can everything. see it in their face, right? It's yeah. so and real. the voice acting. Yeah, that's it, great. It, especially Attack on Titan that just finished. I love the Attack on Titan. The, you can feel the raw emotion and hatred and crying in the end. Dude. It's crazy. Uh, it was, like the, the generational hate and the generational just suffering, right? It was it's a good just, ending. How it all yeah. just repeats mm-hmm. at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're <laughs> we've been podcasting for a long time. And the yeah, last question is, uh, what's next for you? Right? What's, uh, what do you got in store? I mean, we're still very young. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what do you... <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, who knows? But mm-hmm. uh, I'm pursuing a couple of dreams right now. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, I'm trying to just get a good job, right? Mm-hmm. To be stable. Mm-hmm. But you know, my, whole, my biggest dream ever was to always be an actor. <laughs> Go for it, man. I am. I'm trying. I I've, been, I, I've been in the background for quite a bit of shows. Mm-hmm. It's like Heartland, uh, Tin Star, Joe Pickett. Yeah. Just been kind of in the background, but mm-hmm. it's tough. It's a tough, especially right, right now with AI and stuff mm-hmm. and the strikes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the dream. An actor? I, I can see you that. Going that. I love that. Yeah. You'd be great, man. Yeah, but for right now, get healthy, get fit. I'm on a cut now. So mm-hmm. I want an eight pack. Probably not gonna get it. I'll be happy. Yeah, you with, get it with something. Just keep going. Just keep cardio, going. I'm telling you. Of course, oh cardio is freedom. And I'm running. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, getting a good job, seeing her there, I'm fine. I want to travel more, of course. I want to see the world. But awesome. who, who knows what's in store? Yeah. Right? Just live it, day by day. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you for this having me. This is Aiden Tomiak, everybody. Thank you. Thank and, you. Yeah, dude. Thank you for just. The honesty, vulnerability, and a lot of people will listen to this and just derive a lot of good. A lot of just... If not, get a chuckle. Yeah, if not, get a chuckle. Make sure to check out all his other videos and podcasts. He's great. Fall asleep to them. (laughs) Learn something. Feel something. Hey, when he does fall asleep, he's actually listening, though. He's just... Sleep learning. Sleep learning. That's what I always say. (laughs) Okay, buddy. Um, Yeah, as always, everybody... Keep it long term. Peace.